Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. New gender neutral California toy law inspired by simple question from eight year old. So if you're unaware, I'm actually surprised that people aren't like the, the, the right wing people aren't freaking out about this because this has been in the works for, uh, well, since uh, 2021. So this mm -hmm. is Assembly Bill 1084, dating from 2021, uh, forces retailers with 500 or more employees that sell childcare items or toys to maintain a gender neutral so, uh, section or area to be labeled at the discretion of the retailer. Uh, and that went into effect on uh, January 1st. So what I am understanding from this, and I might be wrong, is that uh, they don't necessarily have to make their entire toy section and clothing section or whatever gender neutral. It's just, they have to have a gender neutral toy section. Like this is clearly toys that are not geared towards either of the traditional gender toys. Yeah. It's where you put like the Uno cards. Yeah. Cause there's not like boy Uno and girl Uno. I mean, there probably was at one point, but I've never seen it. I'm sure. I'm sure Jeremy boring will come up with a version of Uno for that. If Uno ever does anything that he considers woke. <laughs> do you want to play cards that aren't woke here non-woke trading cards you can get things like matt walsh with a beard yeah um they say the punishment for not complying is 250 dollars fine the first for the first offense and then 500 for subsequent violations that seems really really light that's incredibly low if you're a, like, so if you're a major retail store that's like that's not even a slap on the wrist. That does not rise to the le like that. That is, we lose more inventory to that to people dropping it off the shelves and breaking in a day. Yeah, like that's so. That's about how much I probably end up accidentally stealing from a grocery store because of the self checkout stuff. I'm just like, oh fuck, this was in the cart. Well, I'm already out the doors. Like. That's probably the shrinkage that a store had to deal with because of me squirreling on my my stuff I'm buying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it, so it doesn't even rise to the level of slap on the wrists. Um, no, like it the, doesn't. The, like it's it's petty pocket change, and like there's a minimum size. Like you have to have at least 500 employees in California mm -hmm. in order for this to actually affect you. So it's like the small stores where that might actually be an impactful fine are exempted from the law anyway. So it's kind of like a big old nothing burger where like, if any store wants to just not comply, it'll cost them basically nothing. So and I don't know if that, so I don't, that could depend yeah. on how, so like this is across all of California. So if you are like, thank you, Razor Stormer for the cheer. Um, so like if all of your locations are not gender neutral, do you get one $500 fine? Do you get a $500 fine per location? Is it $500 per day that you're not in compliance? Like, I, would, I feel like I this are... is just a $500 fine when someone that works for the right department comes by and actually, like, sees it. I think it would be that, because that's how OSHA violations work, right? Like, OSHA yeah. comes in, they don't they don't go, ah, yes, Walmart gets fined $3 billion because they had that many OSHA violations. It's OSHA walks in, sees a pallet that's put on its side and goes, all right, that's 1200 for that. And if we have another person come in uh, and finds another thing, that'll be another $1,200 fine. So, yeah. like, okay, go. Yeah. OSHA violations were like $1,200 uh, to $2,000 in Florida when I was working at Walmart. And that was 20, not 20 years ago. I'm not that old. Fuck. Um, that was like 12, 13, 14 years ago. So the the money that's being asked for in this fine is like a tenth. Yeah. If you, if you adjust for inflation, it's about a tenth of what your average OSHA violation was. And if you've ever, if you've ever worked retail or ever worked warehouse, um, you a lot trip of, a lot of cash flows through those buildings yeah you you kind of trip over that kind of shit all the time there's yeah. no <laughs> this feels so tiny and yeah. the only way that i think a right winger so like if i if i were to have, if i were to be a right winger and i wanted to spin the story into something i would have to omit the 500 person limit and i would have to then blatantly lie and say that imagine you're a mom and pop store yeah. 
That's okay. That, but that's that's what they do all the time anyway. Uh, thank you for gifting the five subs, Razor Stormer. But yeah, that, like that's what the right wing does with this sort of shit anyway. Like, have you seen? Um, oh, what is it? It was just in my head before I said thank you for the subs. Hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm not in your head. I'm sorry. Much to fan artist chagrin. Yeah, I don't know. It'll come back to me. But yeah, no, they they just blatantly lie about this shit all the time. Um, I mean, like, look at we like look at what we covered last year. This wasn't the example I wanted to go with, but um, like what we covered last week with Ron DeSantis and trans kids. Like, the, that's the big lie right now is that, like, oh, they're chopping little boys' dicks off just because they said they want to be a girl. You're like, no, that's not actually happening anywhere. You are blatantly lying about this because you've been told that that never happens anywhere. So, just what's stop. funny? What's funny is that when you when you point out, because I had this, I've had this argument in my comment section. Because fun fact, uh, content creators have this ritual where they they wake up and they either check emails or go through their comment section. Usually, when we're taking a shit. So if I've if I've argued with you in my comment section, just know I'm pooping. Um, but I've had that argument with people in uh, on the one Matt Walsh video Thank that his people hydrate. keep on coming to. Um, where they'll start out saying, like, you're mutilating uh, children's body parts. And then yeah. when you say it's not happening, there's always one of two roads that they go. Either they say, nah, -uh, it really is happening, and they don't bring anything. Or they'll, like, link to an article about somebody who's 17 and has been on hormone therapy for two years mm -hmm. and has been on hormone blockers for five. And, like, this is the prime candidate for we took the precautions for literally half their life. And now yep. this is what's happening as they're on the, the cusp of adulthood. Like mm -hmm. they'll, they'll show that and they'll go, see, I was right. That's a minor. Matt Walsh won't agree with it being a minor, the, but for my argument right now, yeah, it is. I was just going to say, and then they'll, they'll turn right around and be like, no, it's okay for a 30 year old to date a 17 year old because that's basically an 18 year old. Age is just a number yeah. anyway. Yeah. But then and as then... soon as you suggest that, providing gender affirming care to a uh, minor is something that should be done they'll suddenly be they'll like oh no remember 13 is too old to know if you're a boy or a girl or uh, 13 is is too old to know if you're a boy or a girl but it is definitely old enough to know if you're a wife or a husband yeah anyway thank thanks tennessee yeah so this bill passed uh by 49 to 16 which i don't know what the makeup of the state legislature of california is how much republican versus democrat i feel like some republicans joined in on that here i can actually look that up uh california state legislature wikipedia does it just say there somewhere uh currently 32 democrats eight republicans in the senate 62 democrats 18 republican in the uh i don't know whatever the other the house is do they call it? so 49 16 yeah so okay no a bunch of people were absent for the vote oh boy but, um yeah signed into law uh co-author of the bill <laughs> Uh, Evan Lowe revealing that he was inspired. He re he revealed that he was inspired to introduce the legislation following an eight-year-old girl asking, "Why should a store tell me what a girl's shirt or toy is?" Um, that's that's a valid question because like that, these are conversations like um, right-wing people will often say like, "Oh, you can't talk about gay people to four-year-olds because like a four-year-old's not interested in sex one way or the other. They don't know if they're gay or not." What? First off, that's but not can, necessarily but we can true. Force it on you. Well, I mean, first off, that's not necessarily true. Secondly, straight people do this creepy thing where they like as soon as a girl and a boy start playing together, be like, "Oh, is that, are you boyfriend and girlfriend?" They just are you, assume yeah, they're the whole, heterosexual. Are you dating? And it's like no they're just playing they're kids they're like like they, like these people that pretend that kids don't like they, like sexuality has nothing to do with children when it's a developing process it does happen like there are people who knew they were gay from a very young age that doesn't mean that they were necessarily interested in sex right from there but um so this one's yeah. me and but, firing um, oh go on sorry yeah so no i i was 
just going to say, like, I have had fairly deep conversations with my very young stepchildren um, about, because their dad is very much traditional gender role sort of thing, and he will tell them, like, oh, you know, you can't wear pink because that's a girl's color. And so then they will come here being like, oh, but pink is, daddy says pink is a girl's color. They're like, okay. And I don't actually tell them, no, it's, there's no such thing as boy and girl's colors. I, I mean, I've probably said something along those lines at some point, but generally my approach is more, well, why is it a girl's color? What is Socratic it about method? Basically. What is it about pink that makes it a girl's color? And they can never figure it out because, and so that's what I will come and be like, okay, so if we can't think of any reasons why pink would be for girls and not boys, then why can't boys wear pink? It's kind of the same thing that, um, the, I'll, I'll get to what I was going to say before here in a second. Um, but it's kind of the same thing you get when somebody tells like a really racist joke, right? Like, and don't get me wrong. I'm not speaking from a high horse of I've never said an edgy joke in my life, but the the funniest response you can give to anybody who is just doing edgy humor for the sake of being edgy humor is going, why is that funny? Can, can you explain that joke to can, me? Can you explain the joke? Yeah, like I... So I, I'm a I'm I'm a cis white guy, right? So that concept didn't occur to me ever uh, until a friend of mine who is you know in the Georgia South with me and is Asian had a friend say a very racist joke to him, and he just kind of looked at him and went, "So why is that funny again?" Now mind this guy's not like super left or anything. This guy's like he watches Tim Pool and shit, and yet that's still his response. He's just like, "Yeah, I I just want you to explain to me why that was funny." I want to be in on the joke, so you know, please share the humor with me. It makes people really uncomfortable mm -hmm. a lot of times if they're not yeah. like, if they're not already comfortable with the idea that they're just saying something edgy for the sake of it being edgy. They flounder really, really hard. Um, the thing I was, I was going to say before is uh, this is just hip firing. I have no research to back this up, uh, but I have a feeling that one of the reasons why boys and girls at early ages might have more strained relationships is because of that societal expectation that if you're friends with somebody of the opposite gender, that must mean that you two are dating. That must mean that you two like each other. I I have no data to back that up. It's just kind of an assumption I have. And, you know, from having yeah. lived a childhood. Yeah, that sounds sounds cromulent to me. I actually don't know what that word means. Um, it's a word that was made up specifically for an episode of The Simpsons where um, it was, I, I believe the story goes that it was like a bet between writers that they could like make up a word and put it in and like have it pass muster. And th that was that was the episode where uh, uh, Je Jebediah Springfield or Obadiah Springfield, whatever his name is, um, where it's like, oh, a noble spirit embiggens the heart or whatever. And then uh, I think that was Mrs. Krabappel's first appearance. And she was like, I'd never heard the word embiggens before I moved to Springfield. And uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Hoover replies with, oh, I don't see why not. It's a perfectly cromulent word. Oh, my God. And so like embiggen was the fake word that was obviously fake, but they snuck cromulent in there where you could figure out exactly what it means from context. But it's just a word that they made up for it. Um, I might have the details of the story wrong, but that is how I remember it. But also memories fucking suck. So yeah, I could be entirely wrong. Um, okay. Je Jebediah. Fair enough. It's Jebediah Springfield. Is that the okay? I need I need to watch more Simpsons. That's, I, that's I one of the that's one of the OG good episodes. Yeah, I so like there's. I I grew up watching Family Guy. And watching South Park. I did not grow up watching The Simpsons. And I don't even know why, because it's not that like any of the humor was beyond the pale for what I was already watching. Yeah. It's just not a thing that any of my friends watch. So I guess I never watched it with them and therefore didn't watch it myself. Well, I think you're yes. I, I know you're not that much younger than me, but you might be enough younger than me that um they were starting to get less than good when you were in your that style cartoon watching age fair i think the first simpsons episode i ever watched was a the only thing i remember about it was homer was at a uh a fair and he had he, there was like a pea eating contest where he had to eat peas one at a time and that was the only thing i could remember about it it's just him eating peas one at a time with a fork i don't remember that 
It's going to okay. be one of those things where I sit down to watch it. I'm going to see that and then just like have a brain blast of, oh my God, that's what it was. And then it will never be important to me ever again. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this person says uh, the bill will help children express themselves freely and without bias. We need to let kids be kids. Um, remember, remember that when we get to some of the objection to this. So, um, help kids express themselves freely. Um, but only in the ways that we like. Yeah, Jonathan Keller, president of the not-for-profit religious organization California Family Council, remember what we said about organizations with family in the name? Yep. Um, said, we should all have compassion for individuals experiencing gender dysphoria, but activists and state legislatures have no right to force retailers to espouse government-approved messages about sexuality and gender. It's a violation of free speech, and it's just plain wrong. So allowing children the freedom to express themselves is somehow a violation of free speech. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? Like, <laughs> but does it, okay, I, I know in the States you guys have that bizarre thing where corporations are technically people for certain legal purposes. Yeah, as far and as so, the law is concerned. So like sometimes the First Amendment applies to a corporation because that's the corporation's speech. Mm -hmm. um, but like... The way I see it, if if one of the rights protected by the Constitution, if no matter how it's interpreted, it's going to infringe on one person's right, like the same right, so like the freedom of speech, it's the right to freedom of expression. Um, the yeah. corporation has the right to freely express themselves in how they display their uh, their merchandise, um, and the children have the right to express themselves based on. You know, what merchandise they feel is being marketed towards them that they could uh, feel comfortable buying without being teased for, oh, that's a girl's thing or that's a boy's thing. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like the actual living human being should take priority over top of the piece of paper that is a, the idea of a corporation. You would think that, but please remember, these are the same people that get confused over whether an actual living human being is more important to take care of the rights of versus a, a fetus. The, these people get yeah. very confused over that part already. I it's, corporations versus people is probably a little too high bar for them. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. You know, I feel like a condescending asshole when I make jokes like that, but then I remember I have a comment section where I get to know the kind of things they say about me. So I don't know if I care. Okay, that's fair. 